Everything that you've been taught about healthy eating is probably wrong because a new food pyramid just came out and it flips decades of nutrition advice, essentially sponsored by the government, upside down. This is the old food pyramid and this is the new food pyramid. Can you spot the difference? Now, how did this come about? In 1992, they rolled out the old food pyramid and that food pyramid emphasized, we all probably remember, eating a ton of refined grains and carbs and sugars. Some people even made the suggestion that in different food worlds, they were suggesting, and you could draw this deduction, that eating cocoa puffs or sugary cereals was better than eating steak. And it was pretty clear that that's the advice that they were given. I remember growing up in the 90s myself, I thought it was the best thing in the world to be eating bowls of pasta and eating processed foods and crackers and triscuits and other carbs. And I was limiting my intake of steaks because I was told, obviously, through my elders and by the government, that that wasn't great for us. But now we know that protein is king. We know that fats are good for us, so long as you're eating the right types of fats. And we aren't limiting those healthy fats, things like butters and ghee and saturated fats that come from animals, tallow, it's lard in some cases, aren't necessarily the killers that we once thought that they were. On the other hand, it's those highly processed fats, those seed oils, those industrialized fats that are making us sick. The United States faces the highest obesity and type two diabetes rates of any developed nation in the world. The United States spends 2.5 times more than the average developed nation on healthcare and fixing chronic disease in the United States. And our life expectancy is four years lower than all of those countries combined. And a majority of that is a result of the chronic disease that is an output of our food system. In the United States, one third of teens suffer from prediabetes. 20% of children and adolescents have obesity. And 18.5% of young adults have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease as a result of the foods that we're eating. 77% of military aged youth aren't able to join the military primarily as a result of the chronic disease associated with the food that they eat. This is about national security, public safety, the health of the nation, and the amount of money that we spend from the federal budget towards healthcare, which is only going up and up and up and up. So as we've spent more money, we've built a bigger bureaucracy surrounding health, we've only gotten sicker. That's why it's important that we flip the system upside down. And that's why it's so important that we started with the food pyramid, because that is now the new North Star upon which people are gonna be making health decisions. Let me run through a quick bullet point of what this new food pyramid is suggesting. First and foremost, avoiding sugars, right? And on that note, avoiding those highly processed carbs and grains. Instead, we wanna be eating whole grains. We wanna be eating grains that are very, very close to the source, close to the way in which they were originally grown. We don't want to vilify saturated fats and good healthy fats. We talk about the Mediterranean diet and we say, oh, fish has all of these healthy fats. So think about it from that perspective. It's the omega-3 fatty acids that we want in our diets that you can get from fish and DHAs and better fatty acid chains that come from animals. But those highly processed fats, those are the bad ones. We also wanna be avoiding sugars altogether. Instead of just drinking fruit juice, which is full of sugar, drink water. The piece of the food pyramid that really stands out the most is the need to prioritize protein, right? Protein, it's the building blocks of life, it's the building blocks of our bodies. We need those healthy amino acids. So that is the key part of this new food pyramid. Good red meats, ruminant fats that we've talked about a lot in the past are ruminant meats. High quality seafood, seafood that's high in omega-3 fatty acids. One of the points that I've made over the years is, is that we consume way too much of the omega-6 fatty acids. And those omega-6 fatty acids against the omega-3 fatty acids, they create a ratio to keep it very basic. And hundreds of years ago, when we were a lot healthier and we didn't have all these chronic diseases in our diet and our lifestyle, that ratio was like two to one, omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. Now it's 18 to one, 20 to one. And it's because everything that we eat that's processed and comes off the shelf and comes in a box has omega-6 fatty acids, typically by way of seed oils or many of the other processed chemicals that are in the foods that we eat. So that imbalance in the ratio between omega-6 fatty acids and omega-3 fatty acids is what creates so much of that internal inflammation inside of our body. That leads to autoimmune disorders. That leads to internal inflammation, which is the problem with many of our gut issues. And the gut is really the central engine of health in our bodies because it's the gut microbiome that's making us healthy. And so many of these processed industrialized foods that we eat and chemicals are killing all of that positive gut bacteria. With this new food pyramid, it's prioritizing those healthy fats, it's prioritizing protein, and it's 
essentially prioritizing that healthy gut microbiome that's gonna lead to making us healthier, decreasing inflammation. A key piece of this new food pyramid is ending this war, this unnecessary or gratuitous war on healthy fats. How many times have you clicked a link where they talk about how eggs are leading to an increase in cholesterol and it's killing you? Eggs are the perfect food in nature. And it's not just eggs, it's things like consuming seafood. They say, oh, especially pregnant mothers should only be consuming seafood one or two times a week. That's not true. You need those healthy omega-3 fatty acids. Yeah, we don't want to be consuming the high predatory species every single day because then that can lead to an increase in the bioaccumulation of mercury. But we're not talking about eating bluefin tuna for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We're talking about healthy fats and salmons and trouts and sardines and mackerel and krill and a lot of the bait fish that the other fish eat in order to create that healthy fatty profile. If you don't like seafood, don't worry. As I mentioned, it's eggs, it's healthy steaks, it's lamb, it's bison. It's so many of these wonderful proteins that we're growing here and ranching in the United States that are gonna be essential for our diets. Now we need to also look at the institutional piece of this. I talk about school foods and how childhood chronic disease has been an issue that we've been faced with for the past one or two, three decades and how childhood obesity, autoimmune disorders, and so many other ailments that have been harming children throughout the years. We've seen it with the overconsumption of sodas and excessively sugary fruit juices that have added to childhood obesity. But it's also the fact that they're not getting a good nutrient profile in the foods that they eat. And in school foods, the contractors who are allowed to cook food or sell food to children, they have to be approved by the US government. And what does the US government use in order to establish that platform upon which they're approved? Well, they were using this outdated, improper 1992 health pyramid to say, oh, you can be approved by serving Triscuits to children or serving sugary cereals to children. When you go back and look at a lot of these school food menus, they're serving these kids junk because what they serve them is being viewed through this improper prism, the 1992 food pyramid. So what HHS and the current administration has done is they've said, let's refresh this. And they only made it relevant from 2025 to 2030 because guess what? They know that science changes and new evidence comes out. We can't be living in a system in which science is stuck 30 years ago. We need to be able to update things based on what we know and new science. And we also can't be giving government contracts to contractors, the few, by the way, it's like an oligopoly at the top, who are following science from 30 or 40 years ago and have been the primary perpetrators of making Americans sick. They can't be the ones who are profiting off of our sickness. And that's what this does. This shatters the old system. And in my opinion, it creates a new capitalist focused system in which people are actually going and getting the information on their own based on what's right, based on what's contemporary and based on what the science says today, not yesterday. So that's why we've been focusing for the past three or four years on teaching Americans how to cook, but teaching Americans how to keep themselves healthy. And it all starts in the kitchen. And so this is one huge step in the right direction. And I commend the current administration and HHS for making this change. To many people, this might seem like it's overwhelming, new information that they had never considered. But let us know in the comments how you feel, if you have any questions, and talk amongst yourselves, because that's what health always comes down to, is talking with each other and not listening to a dictate from the top.